For problem number one, we are given the point 1216, which is on the terminal side uh, of an angle that's in standard position. So, uh, just kind of a sketch of that in the first quadrant. So, if it's 1216, not drawn to scale or anything, um, but there's that point. That would mean then if we draw a right triangle here, that this side would be 16, this side would be 12. Uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out that the third side, the R really, would be the square root of 12 squared plus 16 squared, ends up being the square root of 400. So we can figure out that R is 20. That means that we know X is 12, y is 16 and r is 20. Now, uh, of course, now that I'm looking at it, it seems like those can be reduced. Uh, we can just reduce those as we uh, figure uh, the different trig functions. Uh, the sine is y over r. So the sine for that theta would be 16 over 20. That reduces by a common factor of 4. So we end up with 4 over 5. Cosine of theta is x over r. So 12 over 20, that also reduces by a factor of 4. So 3 over 5. And tangent of theta is y over x. So that would, uh, would be 16 over 12, which of course reduces by a factor of 4, so it ends up being 3 fourths. The reciprocal for the sine is the cosecant, um, so that would be 5 fourths. We just flip that over. The reciprocal to the cosine is the secant, so that would be 5 thirds. And the reciprocal to the tangent is the cotangent. So that would be 4 thirds. And of course you could figure each of those using their own ratios, um, but works pretty quickly once you have the sine, cosine, tangent just to do reciprocals. Number two is the same type of question. We get the point negative 5, negative 3. Of course that will be in the third quadrant. Uh, now the value of r does not work out quite so nicely there. If x is negative 5, y is negative 3, r ends up being the square root of 34. And again, just using the r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared in order to figure that out. So that means we'll have to do some rationalizing of denominators. Uh, the sine value specifically being y over r would be negative 5 over the square root of 34. We rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 34 over the square root of 34. So we get negative 5 square roots of 34 over 34. And of course we would reduce the square root of 34 if we could, but it doesn't reduce. So we just leave it as it is. Uh, the cosine would be very similar. It ends up being uh, the or my mistake there, I put the x value for the sine, sorry, this, so this would actually be my cosine value. So yeah, my mistake there, cosine is x over, and I just happened to grab the x there instead of the y. Um, so the sine would be very similar. Uh, sine being y over r, so we get negative 3 over the square root of 34. Again, we'd have to rationalize just like we did there we'd end up with uh, negative 3 square roots of 34 over 34. Uh, the tangent works out well. So the tangent works out well. It ends up being tangent of theta is negative 3 over negative 5. Of course, the negatives would cancel. So we just do a positive 3 fifths for that. Um, uh, now, with the reciprocals, I'm going to have to sneak them in down here. But the... Uh, cosecant is the reciprocal for the sine. So it's actually easiest if you take the unrationalized version uh, 
uh, and just do the square root of 34 over negative 3. That's the easiest way to figure that. And same thing for the secant. Take the unrationalized version of the cosine and we get square root of 34 over negative 5. And then the tangent or cotangent ends up just being 5 thirds. Just the reciprocal for the tangent. So there we go. For number three here, we are given the equation negative 8x plus y equals 0, only considering the positive values of x. So what we need to do is use this equation to find really an endpoint. So then the question will be just like 1 and 2. First thing we would do would be to rewrite the equation in slope intercept form. So we'd have y equals 8x. The easiest point to get from that then would be if x is 1 y is 8. So we know the x value, we know the y value, we can use those in order to find the r value. So r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it end up being the square root of 1 plus 64, so the square root of 65. Again, we would reduce if we could, but it doesn't reduce. And again, notice too, I did pick an x value that satisfied this inequality, the x value being greater than 1. Um, and so then it's just a matter of finding our six trig function ratios. So the sine of theta being y over r, so 8 over the square root of 65. Again, we would rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 65 over the square root of 65. And we get 8 square roots of 65 over 65. The cosine being x over r, so 1 over the square root of 65, ends up being the square root of 65 over 65 after we rationalize. And the tangent of theta uh, just ends up being 8 over 1, so just a plain old 8. The reciprocals then, the cosecant, Again, easiest just to do the reciprocal of 8 over the square root of 65, so we get the square root of 65 over 8. The secant of theta uh, ends up being the square root of 65 over 1, so just the square root of 65. And the cotangent of theta ends up being uh, 1 over 8. So there we go. Big difference between 3 and 4 is that for number 4, the x value has to be less than or equal to 0. And also a little bit more here to solve it for y. So we would add the 8x and get negative uh, 5y equals 8x. And then divide by the negative 5, so y equals negative 8 fifths x. Now we're looking to use an x value that's negative. Um, easiest thing that would work would be a negative 5. That would cancel out the 5 that's in the denominator. Again, it has to be negative because we're looking at x values just being less than or equal to 0. So if x is negative 5, then uh, we'd end up getting a y value of 8. And when we try to find the value of r, r being the square root of x squared plus y squared, we end up getting the square root of 89 might seem like it should reduce, but it will not. And so there's the x, the y, and the r. Again, just a matter then of finding the six trig functions. And here's what those six trig functions end up equaling. Again, sine being y over r, we get 8 over the square root of 89, which we have to rationalize. So it ends up being 8 square roots of 89 over 89. Cosine of theta being x over r, we get negative 5 over the square root of 89, which again has to be rationalized. And so we end up with the negative 5 square root of 89 over 89. Tangent of theta being 8 over negative 5. Uh, cosecant, secant again, the reciprocals for the sine and cosine respectively, and then the cotangent negative 5 eighths. Number 5 then, really, just if the uh, sine of theta is 1 7th, then the cosecant would be the reciprocal of that. So the cosecant of theta would equal 7. And for finding the tangent of theta, if the cotangent is the square root of 11 over 4, now the tangent 
would end up being 4 over the square root of 11. Of course, we can't leave it like that. We have to rationalize. So we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 11. We get 4 square roots of 11 over 11. For number 7, just determining whether the statement is possible or impossible. Um, tangent of theta, well, the range for tangent is all real numbers. So this is certainly possible. The secant of theta, though, the range for that has to be outside of negative 1 and 1. So this would be impossible. No matter what theta is, you cannot get a secant to equal 0 0.15. Problem number nine, they tell us the cosine is two-thirds and want us to find all other five trig functions. They do tell us we are in quadrant four, so that means the only two that would be positive would be cosine and secant. Um, but really the cosine tells us our x and our r. So for this information, we know x is two and we know r is three. So then we have to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find the value of y. Uh, again, the basic theorem is that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Well, we're trying to solve for y, and so we would subtract the x squared from both sides and then score root. So really y would equal the score root of uh, r squared minus x squared. So in this case, if we try to figure that out, we end up with 9 minus 4, or 5, so y is really the square root of 5. From here, it's just a matter of finding the six trig functions. So here are what those six trig functions turn out to be. With sine of theta is the square root of 5 over 3. I know they already told me the cosine, but just have it that uh, write that down. Cosine of theta is 2 thirds. And then tangent of theta is the square root of 5 over 2. The reciprocals are where we have to do some rationalizing. Cosecant ends up being 3 over the square root of 5, so we rationalize and end up with 3 square roots of 5 over 5. Secant of theta is just 3 over 2. Uh, the cotangent of theta ends up being 2 over the square root of 5, so again we have to rationalize and get 2 square roots of 5 over 5. Oh, my mistake, I forgot the positives and negatives, so only the cosine and secant would be... Uh, positive in this case. So really my y, because again when I do the solving for y, I should have been doing plus or minus, and again really just deciding that this would be negative because we are in the fourth quadrant, so the y has to be negative. So it should have been a negative square root of 5. So the sine, tangent, cosecant, and cotangent all end up being negative because they contain that y value. Uh, the cosine and the secant do not have the y, so they end up being positive. All right, so for number 10, if the tangent of theta is negative 2 ninths, again, that gives me the x and the y values. Now, we are in quadrant 2. So quadrant 2 means that x would be the negative. Um, so x would be negative 9 y would be a positive 2. And again, we know that because we're talking about quadrant 2. Okay. Um, otherwise, we would not know necessarily which one uh, x or y would be negative. But again, tangent being y over x. Uh, in this case, the x is negative 9, the y is positive 2. We then just find out the value of r using the Pythagorean theorem. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this case, the square root of 81 plus 4, so the square root of 85. So we find our six trig functions. Again, yes, we already have the tangent, but I'll probably write it down anyway. So here are those six trig function values. Again, the sign we have to rationalize, and it starts out as 2 over the square root of 85. And so we end up with 2 square roots of 85 over 85. Uh, the cosine, we also have to rationalize, and it starts out as negative 9 over the square root of 85. So we rationalize and get negative 9 square roots of 85 over 85. Tangent, we were told, was negative 2 ninths. Uh, cosecant works out nicely. It's just the r over the y, so square root of 85 over 2. Secant also works out nicely. end up getting negative square root of 85 over 9. And cotangent uh, ends up just being negative 9 over 2. Now, there are two questions that I'll add to this. Um, they are finding the six trig function values for quadrantal angles. So you'll either have, and you'll get two of those, you'll either get find the six trig functions of
0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, uh, or 270 degrees. Um, so being able to find those six trig function values from there.